Edwin, the King of Northumbria, asked for the hand in marriage of Ethelberga, the sister of the King of Kent. He promised that she would be free to practice her religion and that he would listen to Christian preachers and seriously consider becoming a Christian himself. Ethelberga agreed to marry him in the year 625. Queen Ethelberga brought her chaplain, Bishop Paulinus, to York and was baptised on the Holy Eve of Pentecost, AD 626. Pope Boniface sent King Edwin a letter and presents. He consulted his elders and counsellors who were mostly in agreement with Coifi, the high priest of the pagan religion, in advising him to adopt Christianity. King Edwin gave orders for a church to be built within the Roman walls within easy distance of the palace, on the site of a former Roman temple and the present York Minster. The edifice was hurriedly built of timber and dedicated to Saint Peter. On Easter Sunday, 627, the king and many of his followers were baptized in there by Paulinus. Once again, Christianity prevailed over this region. Bede said that Pope Honorius, when he learned that the nation of the Northumbrians and their king had, by the preaching of Paulinus, been converted to the faith and the confession of Christ, he sent the Paul or Paulium to Paulinus, the vestments of an archbishop. So Paulinus became the first archbishop of York. Soon afterwards, Edwin built a large church of stone, which was to contain the wooden one. But in 633, before the church was finished, the king was defeated by Cadwallon of Wales and Penda of Mercia, and was slain at the Battle of Hatfield Chase. His head was brought to York and subsequently placed in the church of St. Peter, which he had begun. And it was deposited in the porticus or chapel of St. Gregory the Pope, from whose disciples he had received the word. Paulinus fled, and to this day his achievements are remembered in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank thee for thy servant Paulinus, who thou did call to preach the gospel to the people of Northern England. Raise up, we beseech thee, in this and in every land, evangelists and heralds of thy kingdom, that thy church may proclaim the riches of our Saviour, Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Egbert succeeded as Archbishop and was consecrated in 767. He set himself to rebuild the Minster, employing Einbald and Alcuin to oversee the work. Alcuin wrote, For as the warlike King Edwin had received the water of baptism, the Bishop had constructed a large altar and covered it all about with silver and gold and jewels. He dedicated it to the name of Holy Paul and suspended above it a lofty candelabrum which sustained three large vessels of oil with nine rows of lights. He raised the banner of the cross aloft the altar and covered the whole with precious metals. He raised another altar and covered it with silver and jewels and dedicated it to the masters and the cross. He commanded the great ampulla, from which the priest, during celebration, was to pour the wine into the chalice, to be made of fine gold of no small weight. But a new structure of a wondrous basilica was, in the days of this bishop, begun, completed and consecrated.
this house of appropriate altitude is supported under solid columns set into curved arches. Within, it sparkles with admirable ceilings and windows, and in its beauty shines, environed with many aisles. It has a great number of apartments with distinct roofs, which contain 30 altars with various ornaments. Two disciples, Enbald and Alquin, at the command of the prelate, erected this temple. And he himself consecrated it to the Ialma Sophia, the saviour, ten days before his death. 